Hello everyone, my name is Andy and welcome back to Cap Tech. And today we have another tech review covering video and photography style equipment. And today we're looking at the Mini Me 3 axis gimbal for your smartphone. Now this is from Moza. Now real quick, just for full disclosure, the company did send me this free to review to you guys here, but they are not seeing the review ahead of time. They don't get any kind of input on what I'm saying with review. This is my honest opinion to give you the good and the bad and what I've been able to experience using this over the last few weeks during my review. Also, the link to this will be in the video description down below along with any other kind of details there are. So you can check down there if you want to go check it out and see how much it is. But for starters, let's kind of see what you get when you first open the package up. You get the Moza branded zippered carrying case and inside of it's layered with an insulating foam on the top and the bottom and rubber bands to hold everything in place. So you get the case, the gimbal, the USB charging cable, the attachable tripod, some Moza branded stickers and the manual to go with it too. Okay, so the gimbal itself, without your smartphone on it, weighs about two and a half pounds. So it's not super light. So if you're using this for an extended period of time, especially with just one hand, it can get a little bit tiring on there when you're trying to hold it real nice and stable and balanced. You're trying to get good video with it. So it's not super light and it's not tiny. I mean, look, it's a it's a rather large device, and I do have the access uh, the uh, tripod on the bottom of it, but that can be unscrewed as well. But the tripod barely weighs anything, so that doesn't really cover it up. Now that when it's fully charged, this thing. Has has about a 10 hour battery life and it says that it can be charged for uh, fully charged in about three hours um, I hooked it up to a rapid charger so it, it did a lot faster charging and whatever and I used it extensively doing all the reviews and everything here on just one charge so I don't know for certain if it ran for a full 10 hours but it's still got quite a bit of battery life on it and I've only charged it just the one time now something they do recommend in the manual is to download the Moza Mini Genie app that you can get on the Play Store or iOS. It is free to download and so I've been running it on my Android. My S9 Plus here seems to run just fine. Connects to the device via Bluetooth here and that will allow the button interface here to connect with your camera controls and allows you a little bit more functionality. And by using the app you can set it up to do panoramas, you can do delayed shots, you can you know zoom in, you can zoom out, you can change to all kinds of different modes that you can see directly within the app. The app is not required to be able to use your just your phone on here. If for some reason you don't want to run the app on here or for some reason it's not compatible with your particular phone, you can just hook your phone in here, turn it on, do that. You'll just have to do everything via the controls down here or reach up and touch the screen on your phone to be able to activate certain um, options or whatever your camera may have. But you're not required to use it, but it is recommended. And all the testing I did with this, I was using the app. Um, I saw previous versions they had people recommending or had people saying that they couldn't get their Android phone to connect to it, but I got mine to connect to it just fine, uh, super fast. It pops up this little interface here. You click the button when your um, gimbal is on, it connected in less than a second, and I was able to use it just fine. So if you do end up finding yourself, you can't get it to work on your device for whatever reason, you can use this without having to use the app, but it does make life a little bit easier. The gimbal itself has two different USB ports on it. It's got a micro USB port down at the very bottom that you'll use the included USB cable to do the charging. That's where you would charge the entire unit down here. And at the very top where you connect your phone, you have a standard type A USB device. And that's so you can plug your phone into this. You can actually charge your phone while you're using it. Now this device does have built-in wireless charging if your phone supports it and so all you have to do basically is once your phone is connected you'll just press the recommended button combination on the dial here and it'll turn on wireless charging and it'll continue to charge your phone until it gets down to 20 percent of its own battery life and then it'll turn off wireless charging to conserve power for the gimbal so it doesn't just lose its mind and start flipping out but it does have wireless charging so you can continue to power your device and the gimbal at the same time wirelessly while you're shooting video and like I said before if you don't have wireless charging capability on your phone, maybe you have an older model or just one that doesn't support it, it does have a USB port on the very top up here so that you can just plug your phone directly in here. And that makes it a lot easier to be able to continue for a really long active shoot without having to worry about draining the phone battery because especially if you have an over phone, it'll go down a lot faster running video. The gimbal also has three different quarter threads on it here. You got one on the very back, you got one at the very top where you connect your phone to, and you got one at the bottom where you might want to screw in the tripod here. And this allows you all kinds of different things. There's a lot of different devices, say microphones, light sources, whatever you may want to watch, you can actually connect those on here pretty easily. And it just screws in and out really fast and simple. You throw it back in your bag and you got another spot down there for some reason. If you want to put this on a bigger tripod or something, you can do that too. But so at least does come with a lot of different options for allowing you to be able to connect different things. If you're going to go real professional and get a nice big LED light, get a nice uh, 
you know, boom mic out in front of you or whatever, you can do all that within the same gimbal here. Of course, it's going to add to the weight, and eventually you may have to hold it with two hands to keep it stable without exhausting your arms or anything, but at least you do have that option. And that I do like. I hate when you get something like this and there's no place to put anything, and you end up having to kind of just jimmy it together to get it to work. So that is kind of nice, too. Besides just the standard shooting modes of being able to lock the yaw and the pitch and have it follow your target really easily, you can also double press right on here and it'll go into sports mode. And what that does is it allows the yaw to, uh, to move really quickly as you're moving the device. It kind of keeps up with you while maintaining smoothness. And the pitch will stay with it so you can follow your target, but the yaw opens up a lot faster. So when you're like trying to follow somebody around in a you know an active environment, somebody playing basketball, riding a bike, or you're trying to get an action shot, that works out too. And if you go through and you press up three times, it goes into inception mode. And by inception mode, similar to what you'd see in the movie, a nice little corridor long spinning shot that you can get some really cool epic um, shots, you know, moving down a hallway or a lighted environment or something. So inception mode is definitely kind of cool, but I'm not sure how often you would use that as, you know, having a rotating picture or whatever may not appeal to everybody, but at least it's nice that you have that as a specific option. And the general stability of just using the gimbal itself while running around here, you can see that it adds a really nice smooth touch to it. I'm running through my backyard in this at a pretty decent speed or whatever and going upstairs. And I haven't put any kind of motion tracking or any kind of motion stabilization on the phone. This is the default settings. So we're going to have a little bit of a wobble because I'm running, of course. But you can see it does allow you to be able to do some pretty good active shots with this. The gimbal has the ability to shoot in multiple modes here. You can shoot in the standard horizontal mode, which is recommended to get the nice um, widescreen appeal to your videos here, or you can rotate it just by spinning it sideways and it'll go into vertical mode in case you do want to shoot vertical shooting for Instagram or something like that, and then you can get it to go back just by rotating it back again. So you don't have to do any kind of special configuration or anything to get to horizontal or vertical mode here. But if for some reason you want to keep it that way, you can actually um, adjust all the knobs and stuff on the back here, loosen this and rotate thing, uh, rotate it completely around and lock it back in place and it'll permanently stay in that position. Of course, then when you rotate it this way, then it's just going to go into horizontal mode. But at least you do have those two different options and you can switch to it pretty quickly. So if you don't want to permanently change it, you can just rotate it sideways and get your Instagram videos in here that you want to like this and then rotate it and it goes back to normal. Now, follow mode on this is something that's really cool, and that's used within the software itself. It's not specifically the gimbal. It works with the gimbal to follow you. And so what you'll do is you'll set it down onto an environment that you want it to, or I guess if you're holding it and you're following somebody else, and then you'll trace a, a square on the image of what you want it to follow, say specifically your face. And then as you move around, it will specifically lock in on that, and it will automatically move, it'll pan, it'll yaw, it'll pitch to go through and follow you within a certain speed. Of course, if you get close and try and dart around and lose the camera it's going to lose track of you and then it'll just kind of you know lose itself and look straight up like it, it's sad that it lost you or whatever but as long as you're you know doing something normal specifically like vlogging this would be excellent here because you can set it down follow me and then as you're walking around the room talking and swaying back and forth or whatever it stays with you and moves real nice and smooth and keeps you in the center of the frame um, I set it up in the kitchen was testing I was kind of moving back and forth while I was talking to my wife and it was able to capture it without any problems it didn't try and just switch over and lock onto her it stayed on the focus of me since I'm the one that actually locked it onto my face. So follow mode is really cool. That's something I really like. That would be great for vlogging. Now, two of the things about this specific gimbal that I don't really necessarily like in its user preference, or at least the first one is, is that the thumbstick control button that you use to rotate the camera around in circles, it's really, really smooth to match the rest of the body in this. It's got a nice glossy black finish on here. But the problem with it being really, really smooth is when you just have the tip of your thumb on there and you're trying to be able to just lightly move it or whatever, your thumb can slide around on it. So you got to make sure you have a good grip on it to be able to move it quickly. It'd be nice if they took the um, kind of like what you get with control freaks in video games or Whatever. It kind of has a concave style uh, fixed to it there and kind of rubberized on the tip instead of this smooth convex sort of layout here. That's not such a big deal. That's user preference. Um, again, when I'm moving around with it or whatever, if my thumb kind of slips off, then you know I'll lose track of what I'm doing or it doesn't move as smoothly as I want to. But again, that's just me personally. One small thing I disliked. Now, there was something that's kind of weird about this particular device. Now, I've seen this happen in a couple of the other review videos because I wanted to see if I was the only one have experiencing this, is that the gimbal goes a little weird if it thinks the phone is disconnected and it'll start just doing all kinds of weird stuff if you have the phone removed before you go into safe mode. Now you can just single press the power button it'll go into safe mode and it just kind of hangs freely here and then you press it again and it'll rotate itself back around to where it's supposed to be. 
so that it goes in the right position. But if it has a problem getting back there, or if it doesn't know where the phone is, it just starts going bananas. And so if you take the phone off before you're done using it, the whole thing just kind of goes wonky. That's one of those small things that's definitely kind of annoying if you're filming or whatever, and the device thinks you lost control over the phone or doesn't quite know how to get about itself back to there. It starts just gyrating. So if you had this thing sitting up on the tripod here and it lost track of where your phone is, it'll just flip over and fall down. Um, had that happen while I was working this once, definitely kind of annoying, but it didn't happen super often. I used this quite a bit, and that only ever happened once. Um, when I was getting this to, you know, try and mess up just to show you what it looked like here, it was working just fine. And so when you finally get the uh, phone like half off or whatever and turn it on, that's when the gimbal starts going kind of nuts. And if you turn it on with nothing in there and let it power on, it goes up to where it's supposed to, but you can, you can see it's got this weird vibration. It's like it doesn't have enough weight at the top to hold it. So if you just barely touch it, and it'll stop vibrating here like when you get your phone in there but it's definitely kind of weird when you if you just turn it on to kind of play with it and you see it's kind of going nutso again because it doesn't know where the phone is on there so that's definitely something that's kind of annoying that i ran into while playing with this one of the other things that was just a small annoyance and this is just definitely from a user experience here is that the interface that you use to control this you know i already talked about the button up top being real smooth here that's not a big deal you can get used to that the radio wheel down here is notched so you can easily spin it with your thumb would be nice if this one was like that too and this you would use if you're using the app to zoom in and out of the camera which is nice and you don't have to reach up and touch the screen that's excellent here the problem is that all the buttons you use to do the different modes involve up down left and right on this little spinning wheel here and so if you want to go to like inception mode you have to press up three times to do that and if you want to get it to recenter it's left two times over there if you go to sport mode it's right two times over there so unless you keep the handy little guide with you it's going to take you a little while to remember it's like okay is it left twice or right twice to get to this um, just trying to get it to switch modes and it does have the little LEDs to let you know if it's pitch follow or yaw follow if it's going to lock those so you can at least tell the up and down left or right if it's locked but when you're trying to go into different modes like sports mode there's no light indicator on here to let you know what you just did so that's one of the other small complaints but again that's more or less just getting used to the device itself and remembering which buttons are which and then you can do it on the fly just like with the DLSR camera dozens of buttons and modes and settings but until you get used to it you're going to have to carry the manual around with you Alright, so that wraps up my review of the Mini Me from Moza. This is actually a really, really nice phone gimbal. It's one that I will actually be using quite a bit myself when getting video of my, you know, my son running around or taking him to Taekwondo or riding bikes or just running around the yard and playing or even doing some vlogging. I can keep this with me. It works pretty easy. Throw it in the case. I can throw it in the suitcase if I'm going to go out and about. It works really quite nicely. Um, like I said, the link for this is on the video description down below. Other than this, a couple small annoyances, which are more or less just getting used to how the device works works i didn't have any kind of problems with this at all um I, I think it's really really quite nice product i think it's well made like i said it is rather heavy coming at two and a half pounds minus all the other gear you put in here so and i can say from experience using this for a good little while at one time you could definitely feel your arm and your hand getting a little bit tired but other than that great product i highly do recommend it um, if you have any questions or comments you can leave those in the comment section down below and i'll see if i can help you out or if anybody else is down there they can help you out as well if you enjoyed the video do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button down below the video because i do truly appreciate that and if you're new here maybe think about subscribing so you don't miss out on future videos thank you guys so much for all your time you have a wonderful day and i'll talk to you later